know, and so he, I, it's plaster. And I thought, I said, be very careful, Matthew. So five seconds later, I hear this scream. Oh my gosh. Mary, I broke Mary, and he's screaming, and he's screaming, and sparkly Mary got broken, and, and I hear my sister saying, where's Mary's head? Where's Mary's head? <laughs> sparkly Mary's broken, and so I go upstairs, like I said, this is a digression of a digression. I go upstairs, kids really keep you honest, and I said to little Matthew, who's the religious one, I said, well, now the sparkly Mary got broken, but glow-in-the-dark Mary is plastic, and she's not going to break. And his brother had one, and he was using it. And so we put that back in his brother's room. We put the glow-in-the-dark Mary. I said, where do you want it? He said, I, I want it next to my water bottle. He has like... <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, it's Lourdes. I thought, that's nice. And I said, Matthew, this is... I said, Matthew, I said, why do you like Mary? You know, kids are so transparent and... I said, why do you like Mary there? Mary, Mary protects me. No, I should have stopped there. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's so nice. What does Mary protect you from? Monsters. <laughs> so I thought, that's an interesting Maryology, but I'll, I'll take it. So Matthew's role in our family our family spiritual life is to make the sign of the cross at uh, bless at grace, and then and then I say the bless us, O Lord. But that's his role. That's it. And you cannot, if someone says, no, 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 it's my role. So back to this, uh, back to the the uh, mass that is going to be such a joy for everybody. <laughs> so I come out on the altar. I'll stay in camera range. Don't worry. I come out on the altar to, you know, just over, make everybody so joyful, you know, that I'm back. <laughs> and I reverence the altar like that. And I say, in the name, and Matthew says, shut up, that's my role. <laughs> shut up, shut up. Shut up, Uncle Jim. I say that. Now, what is that? You know what that is? I think, I can't prove it, that is God cutting me down to size. That, that is God, that is God's playfulness. It's playful. It's funny. It reminds me that I'm not this big deal for the parish. It reminds me that my nephew can cut me down to size. And I'm just Uncle Jim. I'm not some big deal. That's God's playfulness. If you remember nothing more from this presentation, remember this. And it's, it's God's joy in us and our joy in God. Remember this meditation from Anthony DeMello, the Jesuit priest, the Indian Jesuit priest. Look at God looking at you and smiling. Number seven, humor welcomes. Hospitality is an important virtue in both the Old and the New Testaments. Abraham and Sarah were rewarded for their hospitality to three strangers with the birth of their son Isaac. You remember that story? Abraham's like a thousand years old. And Sarah's 995 because she got married. She got married early. <laughs> and the three strangers come and they say to Abraham, Sarah's going to have a baby. And she laughs. She, she laughs. And God says, why did you laugh? And Sarah says, I didn't laugh. And God says, oh yes, you did. <laughs> she has a baby and the name of the baby is Isaac. Hebrew is Yitzhak, which means he laughs, right? Or he is laughing. And Sarah says, and all will laugh with me. So look at that. The very beginning of the three monotheistic faiths, really the very beginning of everything. What's in there? Humor, hospitality, holiness. It's all in that story, right? It's all about hospitality. In the New Testament, the act of welcoming Jesus into one's home is seen as a sign of one's acceptance of Jesus. Jesus is always welcoming people. It's always from the outside in, right? Jesus is always bringing people in, healing them, forgiving their sins, welcoming them. He's showing God's hospitality. Hospitality is a great Christian virtue. You know, the Benedictines have that great expression, hospice venit, Christus venit. The guest comes, Christ comes. The Jesuits were not as well known for hospitality. Um, <laughs> The joke in the Jesuits is, the guest comes, Christ comes, he is crucified. Um, 
I went, now that I'm in New England, I can tell these stories. Uh, I went with uh, my friend Bill Campbell uh, from Sandwich uh, once to the Benedictine Monastery in Rentham. Is that where it is? Rentham. And we were visiting a sister there. And we got there an hour early. And the sister came out. It was right in their lunchtime. And they had a little parlor. And the sister said, oh, you're early. Let me bring you out lunch. So into the parlor, she goes back. She's in the middle of lunch. She goes back. She makes lunch. She brings out a sandwich and, you know, water and cookies and stuff. It was really wonderful. And I said, well, this is really wonderful hospitality. It's really, and I kept remarking on it. And she said, I'm, that's Benedictine hospitality. I said, you know, it's incredible. She said, why, why, this is not that incredible for us. I'm sure the same thing would happen in a Jesuit community. <laughs> what would happen in a Jesuit community? And I said, in a Jesuit community, if you were an hour early, someone would come down and say, you're an hour early. Wait till I come downstairs. <laughs> Humor is a way of showing hospitality, right? Maybe the easiest way to get someone to feel at home is to make them laugh, right? You know that any sort of gathering is successful when people laugh and can feel at home. Humor, in a sense, welcomes people. A few years ago, I worked in Nairobi, Kenya with the Jesuit Refugee Service, helping uh, refugees, as you heard, start small businesses. And on the last day, well, I, I, I had an eight-day retreat at the Jesuit Retreat House. And on the last day of the retreat, there was a celebratory dinner where everybody was supposed to stand up and talk about the graces they received during the retreat. So I got up and there were about, it turned out that all the men had left. All the priests and brothers and laymen had left, which I'm sure says something deep about male spirituality. <coughs> so I got up and it was just me and 50 African nuns in habits. And of course they said, oh brother, you go first. So I was very worried. I mean, you know, i had been there for a year, but I was afraid I would say something wrong or offensive. And I just blurted out, I'm the only man here. And way in the back of the room, this African nun yelled out, and blessed are you among women. <laughs> so... Laughter had welcomed me, right? I la everybody, everybody laughed like that. I laughed. I felt right at home. Humor is one way of welcoming. Number eight, humor is healing. Physicians, psychologists, and psychiatrists know that humor helps in the healing process in the, in the physical body. Laughter releases endorphins, right? You know that. And if we take seriously the Pauline image of the body of Christ, really seriously, it's a great image that St. Paul gives us. We might consider whether the same holds true for the Christian community from time to time. In the midst of some bad times in the church, need I go into detail in the Archdiocese, as I'm sitting in the Archdiocese of Boston? In the midst of bad times in the church, in Boston, in New York, uh, in Ireland, everywhere, everywhere, the people of God, I believe, could use from time to time a little lightness, a little laughter. That's not to say by any stretch of the imagination, that you laugh about, you laugh about pain or sin in the church. Rather, humor can sometimes give us a much needed break, right? From all the heaviness. It may help to lighten some very painful situations if used well. A few years ago, the Jesuit provincial of the New York province, the Jesuit region in New York, was visiting the province infirmary which is at Fordham University. Uh, the one in New England is in, uh, in Weston, Campion Center. And the provincial was talking about the state of the province. And he said, well, you know, one of the big problems in the province is that we have so many elderly Jesuits, we have nowhere to put them. There isn't even enough room here in the infirmary. To which one old Jesuit yelled out, Father Provincial, we're dying as fast as we can. <laughs> Number nine, humor opens our minds. 